Hi, so this video is going to show you how to key out plants using the trees of the Eastern and Central United States and Canada by William M. Harlow. So before we get started, I just want to point out, if you didn't notice, that this book was originally written in 1942, revised in 1957. So it's definitely an oldie but goodie. Um, and I hope that you'll take a little time to look through the table of contents and especially the first few pages, um, but I would like to read to you just quickly this paragraph from the preface because they really, this book was written more for the lay person. It's a pretty easy guide to use and although there are some errors in it, I think it's definitely still really useful when you're trying to identify trees and especially if you're not an expert. As it says in the second paragraph, most tree books are written by systematic botanists who feel that anyone who really wishes to know the trees should first learn the scientific language of the botanical fraternity. While it is true that this is the best way to train a specialist, it seems very doubtful whether the average hobbyist, hiker, camper, or woodcrafter should be expected to learn and ferret out the meaning of a large number of terms such as polygamedio Ischus, zygomorphic, glossescent, exocarp, and verticillate before getting acquainted with the common trees. So and at any rate, this author is definitely wanting to help people learn how to key out plants and especially trees. And so I thought this would be a good book to pick. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to key out a plant in Harlow's Tree Guide. I'm on the beautiful coast of Maine and I've been hiking around with my field guides in my backpack and I've been noticing that there's a lot of this type of tree right here along the coast. So I thought I'd take out my handy dandy Harlow's tree guide and see if I can key them out. So first thing I'm going to do is turn to page 25 because I know that that's where the general key to the tree groups starts. So I'm just going to go through the guide number by number until I can figure out what the trees are. So uh, let's start with the two number ones. Are the leaves, needles, or foliage evergreen? Or are they deciduous? And they are definitely evergreen. So I know I'm going to go to number two. And are the leaves half inch or more in width and very broad, like a mountain laurel or a rhododendron? No, I definitely think not. They're less than half an inch wide, needle-like, narrow, or small and scale-like. So let's go to three. Are the leaves small and scale-like, close together and overlapping? Or are they not scale-like, long and narrow? Well, I think, but let's get closer so I can take a look. These needles are definitely not scale-like. They are long and narrow. So that means that we're gonna take the choice, the second number three, go to number four. Are the needles in twos, threes, or fives united at the base to form bundles, like a pine, or not in bundles, occurring singly? And these are definitely not in bundles, and they're occurring singly. So I'm going to go on to number five. Number five. Are the needles paired in threes around the twig? or are they alternate in spirals, definitely not opposite each other? And that is my choice, number six. So then I'm gonna ask, see if they are needle-like, four-sided um, in cross-section. Do they roll between the thumb and finger to feel the edges, or are they blunt, essentially parallel sides, flat in cross-section? So I need to pick off a needle Probably best not to get one of the new ones, but one that's been on there for a while. And I'm going to just roll it between my thumb and finger and feel, is it flat or is it, does it have edges and rolls? And it definitely rolls. Great. So then I know that I can say it's a spruce because spruces have those four-sided in cross-section leaves. So I go to page 55 where the spruces are located. Okay, so I'm on page 55 and I'm where the spruces are. It gives me some background information, which I should probably read through to make sure I'm in the right track, but we're just gonna keep going here. So if I turn to the next page, I'll see the key to the spruces. And that's where I wanna be now. 
So now I start over again with number one, and here we have to find some cones. Um, this specifically, either we're looking at the cone length, so I gotta find some cones. It also talks about the needles again, whether they're difficult to roll between the thumb and forefinger, or if they readily roll. So let's see about finding some cones. Now on this tree, the cones are probably way up high. So I can't find any cones right in front of me. So often what I can do is look around at another tree or you might want to just look on the ground and see if you can find some cones. So I took a picture of some of the cones that I was able to find and so we could blow them up and look at them more closely. So the, because the question um, that we're asked to answer is whether the cones are four inches or more in length or if they're two inches or less in length. And these cones are overall, most of them were two inches or less in length. And also the needles are four-sided and readily rolled. So we're gonna pick number two if we keep going down in our key. And now we have to decide between whether the foliage is yellow-green or blue-green. It definitely looks more blue-green to me. It also asks us about the cone scales, which are these parts of the cone right here and wants to know if they are re um, slightly ragged at the edge, Sco cone scales rounded and smooth or slightly ragged, or if they are straight and smooth at the tip, or rounded and very ragged. Well, they're definitely not very ragged. I would say they're smooth and straight at the tip. So that takes us to number three. So let's take a look. It says we want to know whether the twigs have a grayish bloom. Are they never hairy or are they finely hairy? So if I looked at these twigs, um, I don't see any hairiness on these twigs. The other thing it asks us again here is about the cone scales and it asks if they're straight and smooth at the end or rounded and ragged and they're definitely not ragged. So this is a white spruce and I would turn to page 59 because then I could read all about white spruce, make sure that I that everything I read matches what I'm looking at and also gives you some pretty cool extra information, which is what I really like about the Harlow Guide under remarks. So make sure that you definitely um, read the remarks because the remarks are usually pretty interesting. So that is how you use this tree guide.